Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the custom UI editor from Microsoft Office to edit the Excel ribbon and to put your own custom buttons right in the ribbon. So if you've got some macros that you want to create buttons for and put them on the ribbon, I'll, I'll show you how to do that here. So if you haven't yet downloaded the custom UI editor, you can just do a quick Google search for that. Um, there isn't a definitive place that I found it where you can consistently download it because it's links break over time and so your best bet's doing a Google search to find it. Um, once you've got it on your computer then all you really need to do to get started is just opening up an Excel file. It doesn't have to have macros in it yet. And then once it's been attached then what I'm going to do is go to the insert menu here and you can either insert the 2007 code but unless you're running Office 2007 you're not going to need this. Um, for 2010 and newer versions, you're just going to use this this piece right here. And you could also add both, but I'm going to show you just to do this one for now. Uh, the code for both of them is going to be almost identical. And so once this is um, loaded in here, what you can do is you can start entering any XML code. But, you know, if you don't want to start from scratch or don't feel comfortable doing that, you can easily go back to the insert menu here. And under sample XML, select something like custom tab. And what custom tab is going to do is create some XML code for you. And what it does is it's creating a custom tab, and that's what it's called. And within that tab is going to be a group called custom group. And then within that group is also going to be a button called custom button. And it's going to use an image of a happy face. So if I were to just to save this and close the file, and then go back into that Excel file. You don't want to keep it open, otherwise you're going to run into issues if you're trying to edit as, you're, as you've got the file open. So now you'll notice at the end here, I've got a custom tab created. If I click on that, I've got my custom button and my custom group. And so that was all set up through the UI editor. Now this button doesn't do anything now because I still have to attach a macro to it. But I just wanted to show you that just like that, you can already set up a button. So I'm going to close this out and go back into the custom UI editor because I'll show you some other ways that you can, um, some other places you can you can put your button. So right now I set it up so that it's on its on its own tab, but my preference is always just to put it on the home tab unless I've got a lot of different buttons or, or macros to put in on that they that they need their own tab. I like just put it on the home tab because it's easier easier to find. So to do that, instead instead of using an ID of custom tab, I'm going to change this to ID MSO. And MSO just means that it's a Microsoft built-in tab. So I'm going to change it from custom tab to tab home. And so because it's a, a built-in tab, it's got its own specific name. They're going to need the reference if you want it to go in the right place. And if you check out the link to this video, I have a post that shows um, the tab names and some of the more common group names as well. And so by referencing this, this tab home, ID MSO, now the button is going to show up on the home tab. So save and close out and show you what that looks like. By default, it's going to go to the very end. So the custom button's here at the very end, custom group still in here and that custom tab is now gone. So next up, I'll show you how you can insert this button in a different place. Let's say I want to put it in front of this alignment group. So to do that, I'm going to close out of here again. It's important to close out so you don't try to do it while the file's open. And now if I go back to this group ID this time, so I've got the custom group, but I'm going to, need, I'm going to want to insert it before the alignment group. So now I'm going to put in an attribute of insert before MSO. And you want to pay attention to the casing of this because this is case sensitive. So if you were to put a capital I, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And so here, what I'm going to do is reference the group alignment Excel. That's the group code for the group alignment. And again, check out the link and you'll get a link, uh, a list of some of these. So save this. Close and open back up. 
And now you'll notice the custom button is right here now in front of this alignment tab. Now let's say I wanted to mess around a bit more and get rid of this, this font group entirely. I don't want it on the ribbon at all. So I'll go back into the custom UI editor. And you could re really get rid of all those groups if you wanted to. So I'm just going to create another line here. I'm going to type in group ID MSO. And this time it's going to be the group font. And there's going to be an attribute of visible that I'm going to set to false. I'm going to close this. And you can always check that you have set up the code properly by hitting this red check mark. It's going to make sure. So if you get this, this message that tells you you're good to go. If I were to, let's say, forget to close this, I can hit this. It's going to say, you know, expected this, this character. So it can, it can help you out. It's not going to be perfect. Like if I uh, name this incorrectly, it's not going to help me with that saying that this is the, the wrong name. That part it's not going to help me with, but if I've messed up on the structure of it, then it can help me with that. So save and close. Open up the file again. And now you'll notice that font group is now gone. So again, I can remove some of these other ones as well if I wanted to. Um, but uh, it's just really a matter of replicating the same type of code and just setting that visible attribute to, to false. So now let's say you wanted to change this this button to something else. Like let's say I want to use the, the spell check image or something like that. So I'm going to close and show you how to do that. And later I'll show you how to do the custom icons as well from just any image that you download. So the image MSO is happy face, right? So that's again, a built-in Microsoft image because it's got that MSO piece there. Now, if I ch change this to spelling, it's going to give me the spell check icon. And you can do, a, a, a again, a Google search for image MSO library. And I'll leave a link in my post as well where you can find uh, some of them as well. So save and close. And now I'll have a completely different image now for my button. That's spell check button. So that's an easy way to, to, to change your icons. It's just using the Microsoft ones. And there's, there's plenty to choose from. Um, but if you want to use um, your own or if you want to download one from the internet and use that, you can certainly do that. And that's what I'll do now. Um, what I'm going to do is, okay, let's close out of here. And this time what I'm going to use is a, I'm just going to use the Amazon logo. So I've already got it here in front of me. And the key thing for when you're using images is to just aim for a square. As long as they're roughly a square, this is 368 by 370. Technically you're supposed to use... I think 30, 32 by 32 or 16 by 16 for the small ones, but you can still make it work as long as it's it's resembling a square. So save as, okay. And then if I go back into the custom UI editor, the main thing I need to do is select this XML file and go to insert. And this time I'm gonna go to icons. Click on that, got my Amazon logo there, hit open. And now when I expand this, it's right there. And I'm just going to rename this, oh, sorry, change ID to just say Amazon. And the reason I'm doing that, it's going to be easier to reference it. So now you'll notice that where I've got my image MSO attribute, I've set it to spelling. But now it's not a built-in Microsoft image anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that MSO. And I'm just going to reference it with this. Because it says Amazon in here, that's what I'm going to reference the image as. So again, it's... No, no dashes or anything. It's just whatever I've set it to here. So I'm going to save, close. And now when I open up the file again, it's going to have my Amazon icon. And it doesn't have to be in the same folder. I just happen to save it there as well. So you can see now I've got my button and with that, with that Amazon logo. So the only thing really left to, to show you as far as this quick overview is now how to link this to an actual macro. Right, because right now, if I click this button, it's going to give me an error message. It's looking for this callback. Okay, and so what I'm going to do, go to the developer tab, 
Visual Basic. And I'm just going to insert some simple, simple code here. And I'm just going to say sub Amazon. And I'm just going to create a message box, just an alert box saying message box Amazon. Right, really simple. But I still need to I'll save this as a save this as a macro file, of course. I still need to to link this, and that's what that callback macro is for. So again, that's one thing that uh, the custom UI editor makes makes easy. It can generate those callback macros for you. So I want to select my macro enabled file here, which has the code, and so. Next to this checkbox, there's this generate callbacks button. So if I click on this, it's going through my code and, and sees that I have one, one control in there, one thing that I need to link back to a macro. Because if you go back onto here, you'll notice this, this on action attribute. And that basically means, okay, when you click on this button, call this macro, which is the callback. So that's why it's called callback. If I were to, ch or to call this something else, let's say, you know, CB for a callback, right? If I were to do that, then if I go back here, it changes this to sub CB, whatever I call it, right? So it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna save this file just because I changed it, close, and go back into my macro file here. And then what I'm gonna do is just copy that code above here. Now right now that doesn't do any do anything. What I'm going to do now is just link it to this macro here. So copy and paste. And so now when I click that button, it's going to run this macro, which is this one. So if it works properly, it should la launch a message box that says Amazon. So go back to the home tab, hit the button that says Amazon. So that's how you can link up your buttons to to um, to the ribbon is basically you have to decide a you know how many buttons you want to add because you can easily replicate this code. If I go back to custom UI editor, you know once I've got this group set up, I could replicate this. Just do a copy and paste. So I'm going to do copy, paste a few times. Now the thing is I can't use the same. ID. Let's say I'll call this button one. Oh, sorry, button one. This one will be button two. Button three. And again, I can change the different labels: custom button one, custom button two, custom button three. And right now, the image is going to be Amazon for all of them. Um, the on action, I don't want to have unless I want the exact same macro to run. Probably want different callback macros as well. And so now. I've set up, I got three buttons. If I go back to generate callbacks, now it's created three different callbacks for each one of those buttons. So once I had those set up, I can copy that, paste that back into, into uh, my VBA code. So I save this, close it, and then launch the macro enable file one more time. You'll now see I've got these three buttons, custom button one, custom button two, custom button three. And of course you can change those descriptions. You can add, you can change the, the image and the macro that's that's associated with each one of them. So you can easily expand this to, you know, however many, however many buttons you wanna use. Um, there's more complicated things you can do with these ribbon customizations. I mean, I just showed you a quick overview just of adding some buttons. You can, there's toggle buttons, you can do drop downs, all sorts of stuff. Obviously that's a, a lot more complicated. So I mean, you can all if you if you're interested in that, you can look up um, books on Ribbon X coding, and that'll that'll cover that st stuff in a bit of detail for you. I just want to give you a quick overview of how you can do this using the custom UI editor and you know easily attaching your macros to some custom buttons in in the ribbon. And so that's how you use the custom UI editor. And uh, thanks for watching.